Hey, welcome to Planetary Pennies, astrology overview and look at the month ahead of October 2020. Before I start, uh, some people have been telling me they're finding it difficult to find their particular sun sign and they're not, they don't particularly want to read or listen to all the other sun signs, which I fully understand, unless of course you know your ascendant or your moon sign and then you can also look at those for yourself. So my lovely tech guy, Jerry, has just given me a brief description so that I can explain to you how you find your particular sun sign. So um, if you look down here at the bottom of the video here, you should see a little arrow. I think at this point, it's probably pointing upwards, but it has uh, something written on it that says, show more. Now, what you have to do is you click on show more and a description box drops down. And then you will see like an index for all the, um, the signs. So you'll have, you know, uh, Leo, and it'll start with the overview for October plus Leo's astrology. So that way, it, 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 I'm hoping it'll be a lot easier for you to navigate around this, this channel. Okay, so with no further ado, and I really hope that helps to explain it, I will continue with October's overview. So, <clears throat> we are now in Libra season. So, you know, when um, the sun moves into Libra, um, it, it, it kind of focuses us much more on the relationship aspect of life. So that would be the relationship aspect of, for example, um, you know, our one-to-one -one close friendships, our one-to-one -one, um, intimate relationships um, with family, with, with, with more, you know, our wider friend circle. I also think, because when I looked at the, um, the chart, and I'm gonna go over that briefly in a minute, when I looked at the chart for October, um, that there is actually a, a, a pretty strong emphasis, in spite of the sun being in Libra, there is an emphasis on relationships. And I think this is on a rather grander scale because I think this is actually um, on an international scale, relationships between countries, relationships within countries, between communities. Um, my, my sense is because we have Mars retrograde and it will be for quite a while, um, in Aries and Mars is making this harsh, difficult aspect to the big boys, Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter in Capricorn, which is in the seventh house of this October chart that I've set up. And what that tells me is that um, I really feel governments and um, world leaders are gonna really struggle with, with keeping people um, safe within the confines of lockdown, because I suspect there's gonna be a, a real movement um, underneath or underground, if you like, of um, the masses, the populace, getting very frustrated with lockdown, getting very frustrated with the fact that, um, you know, they are being so damaged financially in their individual businesses. Um, they are losing jobs. And so there is going to be, I think, a, a real surge towards this kind of unrest. And my sense is that as these planets, um, that is Pluto, Jupiter and Saturn, start to move forward again in Capricorn, because um, Pluto actually starts to move forward on the, yes, it, it moves forward on the 4th of October. So we will then have these three big boys going di direct in Capricorn. So that's Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter. Now remember, Jupiter expands, and Jupiter can expand negative stuff as well as positive stuff, because it's like Jupiter is kind of neutral. So what I wanna say with this is that, um, you know, Pluto is pushing us towards transforming the way we, we actually govern our planet it's, it's pushing countries to transform 
the way they they administer their governmental duties. Um, it's it's on such a broad scale. You see Saturn that is also direct now because Saturn went direct at the end of, of uh, September. Um, you know, Saturn is about governments and and order and law and restrictions and, and, and boundaries. And I really feel that uh, there is going to be quite a tension throughout the month of October because as we move towards the end of the year when these planets, um, in a sense, meet up much more tightly because Jupiter, and again, remember, it expands. It expands what it touches. That's great if, it, if you've got a winning lottery ticket. Um, and maybe we'll get some of those this month. Who knows? And uh, let's hope I'll go and buy one. And um, it, it expands what's negative and what's dark as well. So, you know, we also have to remember that we're moving towards the US elections. And we've seen in other years how uh, tense things get throughout the world as we observe what's happening on the on the United States stage in 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 these kind of events that it that, that have to unfold. So what I'm saying on a more personal level is be mindful of your close personal relationships. Be mindful of short tempers with each other. I notice for example on social media one gets um, a lot of kind of attacking going on between people you know there's the 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 the, the, the pro masks against the anti masks there's the pro vaxxers against the anti vaxxers i mean people we've all got to try and live together in harmony and at this point does it matter on one level um who's right and who's wrong it's just that perhaps we have differences of opinion and i think if we can respect each other's differences of opinion as we all strive towards building a stronger future and somehow pulling together um, the, 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 the dramatic change that this planet is, is kind of going through at the moment. If we go with that, because, you know, when, you, um, uh, when, when, a, when a, a, a branch holds itself firm against the wind, the wind will snap it and break it. If it bends, then it can survive. And I think one of the underlying uh, symbols for me about this month is that what we have to do is actually bend with that force of the wind. We've got to bend with the force of Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter moving towards <coughs> their, their final kind of meeting in... Um, November, I think it is, when they finally all get together. <clears throat> the other thing I want to talk about um, before I move on to your individual signs is that we have a Mercury retrograde this month. Now, please don't fear Mercury retrograde. It can be a good thing because it can give you, it can give all of us, including the government, second chances to tweak things, to get things right this time. You know, um, as countries throughout the planet are beginning to see that they may have to enforce larger lockdowns again because of this kind of second wave that, uh, I don't know whether the first wave ever went away, to be quite honest, but we have this kind of surge in, in, in virus cases. Um, it, it feels like, hopefully, every single government throughout the world will use the vision of hindsight. I mean, we all know that 2020 is going to have that stigma on it forever of 2020 hindsight and um but you know this mercury retrograde is helping that it's saying um look we can see what we perhaps didn't get right last time let's try and actually get it right this time because that way maybe uh we can save lives we can save jobs we can save businesses so that's the positive of mercury retrograde the the sort of the more downside of Mercury retrograde and Mercury is going to be in Scorpio um, and he, he's, he goes um, then back into Libra and um, he, he, he doesn't go direct till November the 3rd. So we've got from the 14th of October, we've got this Mercury retrograde period. Yes, we can expect delays in travel, but 
I think we know why and I think we're all more aware that if we are booking long distance travel or even short distance travel, it may be subject to change or cancellation. And I don't think we can just stop um, living our lives because of all these restrictions. I think we have to learn to adapt. And by adapting, I think respect everybody's own individual wishes within that um, and, and respect each other because um, this, this Libra um, emphasis on relationship, I do feel is super important for October. Um, you know, this Mars square to Saturn and, and Pluto and Jupiter, uh, you know, there's gonna be a lot of kind of sparking off and fights and arguments and uh, it, it's it's just it's just quite tricky. I just want to look at what um, Uranus is doing because Uranus is retrograde, of course, in Taurus, and I do think because um, Taurus is all about money and 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 investments, um, this retrograde um, Uranus is, is going to see a little bit more instability again in the financial world and and the sort of the economic climate. Um, which is not what any of us want to hear, but I think there's a, there's a lot of nervousness around because of you know the fact that we we we're, we're coming into winter in the northern hemisphere and we are going to go through quite a challenging time. Now, I have talked a lot about October in this overview, but I just feel it's important to get these points across. Um, your individual sun signs will will probably not be quite as long, um, but they will hopefully have the more direct information that you require to navigate your way through October. So before you go on to that, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into my channel, watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. If you've not subscribed, I'd be super happy if you could, that would be fantastic. And the likes and shares are hugely, hugely appreciated. And also, if you would like to book a personal one-to-one -one session with me for astrology or life coaching, or you'll probably find it's a combination of both, in fact, um, then the um, my website address is in the description box underneath the video. I think it's also just written here in the um, bottom of the video. So that's all I want to say for now. And so until next month, um, enjoy your October horoscopes. Thank you. Hey Libra, welcome to your October astrology for the sun in Libra or for the ascendant in Libra. And if you know that you have your moon in Libra, why don't you check that out too? Okay, so first of all, I want to say happy birthday, Libra. It's your season and it's all about relating and you are all about relating. And we start on the first of the month in your seventh house of relating to your significant relationship, we have a full moon in Aries and it's conjunct Chiron. Well, those are the facts. What does it mean? Well, this is about, um, I think, some kind of uh, completion to do with, with your significant other to do with a health issue. So if your significant other's other has had health issues that have need to be addressed, I think you're going to start to see that kind of um, shift and move on and uh, maybe something actually starts to be done about whatever the particular problem is. It can also be just in how you talk to each other because sometimes Chiron can be about being each other's therapist and each other's really good friend because, you know, we heal each other through our own experiences and the wounds that we've received in the past. So it may also be about having some quality time, sitting down, listening, you know, active listening, as we say in counselling, um, active listening to your significant relationship and helping them perhaps to just make a little bit more sense out of everything that's been going on lately. Then let's move forward to the 4th of October because 
Pluto, one of the big boys in your fourth house of Capricorn with Jupiter and Saturn is joining those boys going direct. Now he won't meet up with them yet and Jupiter is actually just lagging behind, but he goes a lot, he travels a lot faster than Pluto and Saturn. So Jupiter at some point is going to come up and conjunct Pluto. And when that happens, I think it's really going to be about, um, I think you're gonna have some quite significantly grand ideas about where you live. And if you've been thinking of moving house or making significant changes in the, 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 the current place you're, you're living, then I think this will speed up the process. And uh, you're, you're in the last kind of few months of this energy, um, so make the most of it because uh, it's it, the whole energy focus will change from next January when both Saturn and Jupiter have moved into Aquarius and your fifth house. So also I need to talk about the fact that Mercury is going retrograde on the 14th and it's going retrograde in Scorpio in your second house of finance. So if you've got to kind of make some finances available to do something within the home, it could be that you're doing uh, renovations or just redecorating, but there could be, there must be something going on in the home. Then Mercury retrograde, I think may, may take you back to where you thought, oh, I'd, I'd forgotten I'd got that in that account or in that deposit account. Oh, I could use that. So Mercury retrograde often has hidden kind of benefits. So don't overlook them. I think if we all go into Mercury retrograde thinking, oh my God, this is going to be awful and everything is going to get slowed down and communications are all going to go haywire, um, then we kind of attract that into our lives. And yes, those things can happen with Mercury retrograde. But Mercury has two sides. He can also be actually trying to be helpful and saying, look, I'm just going to take you back to this point because you look at that again, that could really be useful for you. So bear that in mind with Mercury. And he will be going right back into your first house in Libra. So, uh, you know, that's going to be very much about uh, you and yourself, you know, me, I. And, you know, there may be things that you want to address or change with you that, you know, maybe in the way you communicate. And seeing as that links in with, with the full moon in your seventh house, it could be about... Um, just finding more empathic ways of commuting, co commuting, not commuting, of uh, c conversing with your significant other. So moving on, we have on the 16th, a new moon. And of course it's in your first house, it's in Libra. So once again, we have this lovely energy for you this month. It brings in the energy of your seventh house of relationships. So it, it, it's, it's an interesting uh, new moon because it's quite late in Libra. It's actually at 23 degrees. So it will be making, uh, well, it'll be making a bit of a, a, a harsh angle to Saturn and Pluto in your house of home. So there may be, maybe you have to change some of your ideas about where you thought you should be in terms of living space. I don't know, there's something around that there for me. I, I, I wanna go on now though to the full moon because we have two full moons this month. We have one on the first and one on the 31st, which is Halloween. And it's in Taurus and this is in your eighth house. Now, this is quite an interesting full moon and I'm gonna go into that more when I do the full moon video um, for Halloween in Taurus, uh, actually on the 31st. Now, and, and that'll be streamed live on Facebook and then it will be available on YouTube. But this full moon is conjunct Uranus that's retrograde. Now, it's in your eighth house. Your eighth house is about joint finances, joint investments. It can be other people's money as well. It can be transformation. Uranus is very much about the unexpected, about surprises. It's conjunct the full moon. The full moon is about um, completion, endings. Um, you know, that's it, something's finished. So 
it could be that something that you've been working on, um, a, 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 a something with regard to finance, um, suddenly, unexpectedly um, finishes, but perhaps in an unexpected and pleasing way. Uh, let's try and look to the positive and let's try and wish that into our lives. Um, so also I think it's, it, it is about transformation and it may be that you will get some interesting ideas about how you can transform the way you work with your money with um, other people. So, you know, if you have joint investments or a joint account or, you know, you're planning to do something together financially and that not necessarily with your, your partner, but that could be with, with, with a business partner or uh, just somebody you're planning to set a business up. If you, if you look outside the box, Libra, then this could be a really interesting full moon and not particularly spooky at all. So on that note, Libra, I wish you a very happy birthday month. And also I'd like to say thank you so much for tuning into my channel to watch this video. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube account, I'd be really super pleased if you could do that. You can click on the subscription box, which is just down there underneath the video. Also, if you want to um, have a one-to-one -one with me for life coaching or astrology, or a mixture of both, because that tends to be the way I work, um, then my website address is just here at the bottom of the video. And uh, I'd, I'd love to meet up with you. Okay, so once again, thank you, Libra, and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.